Total Laparoscopic Sigmoid Vaginoplasty, a video article. Vaginal reconstruction is of major importance for the psychological and sexual well-being and quality of life of transgender women and biological women with congenital or post-ablative absence of the vagina. In sigmoid vaginoplasty, a pedicled sigmoid segment is used as neovaginal lining. Advantages are providing sufficient vaginal depth, self-lubrication, and a lesser tendency to shrink. The disadvantages are the need for interabdominal surgery and bowel anastomosis with concomitant risks. Three distinct groups of patients are indicated to undergo total laparoscopic sigmoid vaginoplasty. Transgender women with penile hypoplasia, transgender women with a failed primary vaginoplasty, biological women with either acquired or congenital absence of a functional vagina. Contraindications comprise a history of intestinal malignancy, inflammatory bowel disease, extensive abdominal surgery. Relative contraindications are smoking and obesity. Given current literature, intestinal vaginoplasty is associated with low complication rates. Since 2008, our group performed 42 primary and 21 revision procedures, mainly in transgender women. Overall good aesthetic and functional results were achieved. Complications comprised three rectal perforations and two anastomotic leakages. These were addressed laparoscopically. There were no conversions to laparotomy or fistula formation. In this video, we present the surgical technique of total laparoscopic sigmoid vaginoplasty in a young transgender woman with penile hypoplasia. To facilitate a simultaneous abdominal perineal approach, the laparoscopic surgeon is positioned at the patient's right lateral side and the genital surgeon in the French position. The procedure is started by cutting a caudally based perineoscrotal full thickness triangular skin flap. The bulbous pyrochiosum muscle is dissected off the bulbar part of the urethra. Dissection of the neovaginal cavity is started with diathermia after which blunt dissection is carried out up to the peritoneal fold. This is done by continuously checking the rectal wall by palpating a straight clamp with a gauze which has been placed in the rectum. The urethra is shortened and spatulated. The corporal body is reduced and oversewn. The blood supply of the corpus pochiosum is ligated. A bilateral orchiectomy is performed. After circumcision, the penile skin is dissected off the penile body, leaving it attached cranially to the pubic region. A pedicle dorsal penile neurovascular bundle is dissected. After dissection of both corporal bodies and to the pubic bone, they are ligated, removed, and the stumps are fixed together in the midline. After half an hour, the laparoscopic surgeon starts by placing three trucars and applying pneumoperitoneum. From the preputium and part of the gland's penis, a clitoris, clitoral hood, and labia minora are sculptured. The neoclitoris is fixed to the corporal remnants. The sigmoid is mobilized from its peritoneal lateral adhesions. The peritoneal fold is opened and the mesosigmoid is mobilized from lateral to medial. The vascular anatomy is identified. After stapling the distal sigmoid, the mesosigmoid is adequately transected to the base of the sigmoid arteries. The distal part is completely dependent on Drummond's arcade. A segment of approximately 6 inches is isolated and brought caudally. The vascular mobilization should allow for this descent. The distal sigmoid is checked for pulsations in the mesentery and transverse arteries ascending into the bowel. The peritoneal fold between rectum and bladder is opened guided by the gauze in the neovaginal cavity, and the sigmoid segment is grasped with an atraumatic clamp. The sigmoid is guided through the neovaginal tunnel in an isoperistaltic way, preventing vascular torsion. The penile skin is inverted, and a vertical incision is made in the inversion flap to bring out the clitoris, labia minora, infundibulum, and urinary meatus.
The distal suture line of the sigmoid segment is opened and fixed to the external vaginoplasty in an exaggerated interdigited fashion. A transilluminating perspex dildo is introduced in the sigmoid from the perineal side to measure the neovaginal length, after which the proximal sigmoid is transected with a linear stapler. The neovaginal top is fixed to the promontory with non resorbable stitches. Redundant scrotal skin is trimmed to form the labia majora. The procedure ends with a side-to-side -side intestinal anastomosis with a linear stapler through the umbilical trocar hole. Trocar holes are closed in layers. This is the preoperative image and direct postoperative result after total laparoscopic sigmoid vaginoplasty in a transgender woman with penile hypoplasia.